He ordered us to submit ourselves willingly to him. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of that worship except him. Allah, glory be to him. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. Welcome my brothers and sisters to the Tuesday lecture another time and another lecture, alhamdulillah, that we try to get together the three communities, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Brothers and sisters are watching us, whether on Zoom or Facebook Live. And it's our attempt to get that connection because when every message works separately, that doesn't get much of results, actually. When we get the sense of the oneness, when we had that sense of togetherness and the familyhood, we feel that we are all connected somehow. That's why you, you have people from Orlando, you have our brother Muhammad Ali from Atlanta, you have people from Clearwater, from Newport Ritchie, from Tarpon Spring, from Tampa, and MashaAllah, we all come together in one place, learning and getting knowledge, sharing thoughts, asking questions, you know, taking, even, even asking about each other. That's kind of, alhamdulillah, connection. May Allah keep this ni'mah upon all of us, Allahumma ameen. We talked the last time about the choice of being kind and imitating the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa which is something great actually. When, when we shared that point with, with all of you, the way that we looked at the sunnah of Rasulullah, the way that we are interacting with his ahadith, with his lifestyle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But one of the things that I have noticed recently that lots of people are talking about how much do we need to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How much love should we give to Rasulullah? But very rarely, very rare people have talked about how much does the Prophet Muhammad love his ummah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and the Prophet's love to his ummah has to resonate somehow in our hearts to know that one of the descriptions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran, I'm not talking about one of the companions had described Rasulullah. No, Allah, the creator, had described Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with many of the features, many of the names, and the beautiful description for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran about his ethics and morals and about his behavior, about his delivering to the message of Allah and lots of good things actually. And all of them are good because we are talking about the best human ever was created. But one of the, the description that you can find at the last ayah in Surah At-Tawbah, the Surah which has no Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the last verse, Allah is giving quick description for Rasulullah that matters us, related to us. Are we are the followers of the Prophet Muhammad? We are those people had who had believed in Rasulullah. We talked a lot about imitating him. We talked about following his footsteps, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But Allah had mentioned something very interesting. I wanted to share in these very short minutes what Allah had mentioned in the last verse in Surah At-Tawbah. Allah said, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ There is a messenger from you came to you. Means he's one of you. He's a human being. And that's a very clear aqidah for all Muslims. We, we are not exaggerating and over praising Rasulullah to take him to a higher status than being human being. So number one, he is one of us. Means he is a human being. He is talking Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a tongue like our tongue. He is a human being got the revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's number one. Rasulun min anfusikum. Listen. Azizun alayhi ma'anittum. Allahu Akbar. 
whenever a hardship befalls upon you, he feels so grieved and sad. Means he is caring. He is caring and loving. He has that passionate. He has that care and love to you. And that's number two. Number three, Bil Mu'minina Raufur Rahim. He is so passionate, so merciful, so kind to the believers. So that description is relating to us. Now, let me go back to the, the first question. Do you know how much Rasulullah had loved you? If you do not know how much he loves you, let's go to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated in al-Bukhari and Muslim. It's mentioned in al-Bukhari and Muslim narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu an. And that takes me to the last days in the life of Rasulullah. To go more specific, that happened five days before the death of Rasulullah. And that was the day of Wednesday. And actually that happened in an area that most of us had visited while we do Umrah or Hajj, which is al baqiya you know, the graveyard of al baqiya Rasulullah one day had visited al baqiya when he felt sick, when he got the fever, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And while he's visiting al baqiya he said a very profound statement that captured the attention of his companions. So he said, ishtaqtu ila ikhwani. I... I am missing my brothers. I wish if I had to meet my brothers. So Sayyiduna Abu Raira said, Ya Rasulullah, awalasna ikhwanuk? Aren't we your brothers? He said, No, you are my companions. But my brothers are those who will come after me. And they didn't have the chance to meet with me. Those are my brothers. Means my brothers and sisters in my ummah. Those who will come after me. They never see me and they will believe in me. They are my brothers. Rasulullah is missing us. Rasulullah, one of his wishes before he dies that he wishes if he ever had the ability to meet with us. But because of that age limit, because of the destiny of Allah, he would not live longer than this and he will die and he has no choice. He has no chance to meet with us. That's why he's missing us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you know what? The next question from Abu Huraira, that actually, it, it, it grabbed my heart. Like I felt that point had squeezed my heart with full passionate to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, aren't you going to meet with them in, at any stage? Will you meet with your brothers and sisters, those who didn't see you ever? Will you meet them at any stage after this? Rasulullah looked long to the sky and he said, yes, I am going to meet with them. I will be waiting for them on il, in al Haud. I will be waiting for them at my Haud, the, the Kawthar, the river of al Kawthar. And I will call them one by one so they come and they take the drink from my hand. This is Rasulullah. And that means Rasulullah had died. And he is thinking of me and you and all of us. And he is waiting for us on Al-Hawd. 
and, and, and al kawthar to drink from his hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the third question from Abu Huraira is even more interesting. And that makes sense. He said, Ya Rasulallah, so how could you know them if you had ever, if you didn't ever see them? How could you know them? How could you recognize that this is your ummah? Rasulullah said to Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, let me give you an example. He said, imagine there is a man who had black horses in color and striped horses in color. Would he be able to identify them, to distinguish them? He said, of course. He would be able through the colors to distinguish, to know them. He said, the same applies to the day of judgment. My ummah, my people, my followers, the believers of my ummah, I will know them as ghurlan muhajjaleen. And you can ask, what does it mean? They will have spots in their bodies, are illuminating, are shining, have light, the face, elbows, the knees. These parts will in light, it will illuminate, will be shining on the day of judgment. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَذَلِكَ مِنْ أَثَرِ الْوُضُوءِ And that's because of their wudu. Then he looked at the Sahaba and he said, فَأَسْبِغُوا الْوُضُوءَ يَا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ Means, make your wudu extra good, O servants of Allah. Sayyidina Abu Hurairah said, since ever, from that day on, I started to be careful and do my wudu extra good because to be known and identified to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment. What a beautiful hadith. What a beautiful hadith that tells you the whole map. How can you meet with Rasulullah? on the day of judgment, insha'Allah. So if you really miss him, if you want to be with him, if you want to be with amongst the people that they will take the sip of drink, so Rasulullah will have people are passing by him. When he saw, sees those who are ghurlan, muhajjaleen, and they have these spots of nur in their bodies, he will call them, come on, yes, yes, you Bilal, Come on, you Muhammad Ali, come on, you Rahim, come on, and you um, Maryam, come on, you Shaliza, come on, you Abdul Basit, come on, take the drink. He will call us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to meet with him. And one of the things, actually, that you need to know about his life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially in the last five days, I'm, I'm actually like concentrating in the farewell thought of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The last days of his life, he was so concerned of his, of his companions and his ummah, those who will come after him. That day when he talked about us in al baqiyah he went back to his house and the fever became stronger on him sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the point that some of the sahaba brought some cold water to put over his head and his body sallallahu alaihi wasallam then he started to recite and he started to tell them you know what ibrahim said to allah about his ummah about his nation rabbi Oh my Rabb, my people, my Ummah have misled lots of people, guided lots of people. If you are going to punish them, they are your servants. They are your creation. If you forgive them, you are the most forgiven, the most merciful. 
Then he said, as for Jesus, as for Isa, he said to Allah, O oh Allah, they are in to Abdibuhum, Fainahum Ibaduk. As for Ibrahim, he said, Faman Tabiani, Fainahu Minni. Whoever followed me, he is part of me. Waman Asani, if he disobeyed me, you are the most forgiven, the most merciful. As for Isa, said to Allah, O oh Allah, do whatever you want with them. If you want to punish them, it's yours. If you, if you want to forgive them, they are yours. I will not interfere. And the Rasulullah raised his hands. Who is narrating this incident? Sayyiduna Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu anhu. He said, I was there when he raised his hand. And he said, oh Allah, as for me, like my request, my dua, I will tell you, oh Allah, Ummati, Ummati means, oh Allah, save my nation, save my nation. And he started to weep and cry to the point that his beard was soaked with tears, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as if somebody had got a bucket of water over his head and he spilled the water over his head like his tears was soaking his bird. His bird was soaked in tears, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His beard, like, full of tears. And at that conjunction, at that moment, Allah had sent Jibreel, alayhi salam, and he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Allah is sending salam to you. And Allah is saying, and Allah is asking, and he knows. Allah knows. And he says, why are you crying? He said, I'm crying because of my ummah. I'm concerned of my ummah. He has that passionate towards his ummah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah responded. And Allah said, inna sanurdika fi ummatik wa la nasu'uka abada. We will make you pleased with your ummah on the day of judgment and we will not turn you to be grief to be sad over your ummah O muhammad that was his concern sallallahu alayhi wasallam towards his ummah and now you can ask yourself this is what is going to happen on the day of judgment allah had given rasulullah the intercession rasulullah will wait us at Al Kawthar River, he will know us through some of the signs in our bodies. So, what's my mission and your mission? Our mission is to be so adherent to the religion of Allah, to stick to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to know that the easy thing is to claim that you love him. It's easy to claim. But if you wanted to prove that practically, you want to practice his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow his ethics. Follow his morals. Study his seerah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how come you raise your hand on the day of judgment to say, oh messenger of Rasulullah of Allah, I am one of your ummah. So how could you prove this? How could you prove that you are one of the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And you know what? We are, we came like many years after his time sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are not the first generation, yes. We are not the generation of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Bilal and Sa'd and we are not those people. We are not the companions of Rasulullah, but we have a good advantage. You know what's that advantage? That we didn't see him. That we didn't meet him, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. yet we believed in him. We loved him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We try our best to follow his sunnah, but actually 
We need to do a lot of things. We need to exert more efforts to deserve to be amongst the Sahaba. Can you imagine who is there? Just try to close your eyes for a moment and try to imagine if Rasulullah will stand next to Al Kawthar River waiting for us. So who is who else you expect to be next to Rasulullah? Who would be on his side, right side, or left side? Who will be around the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So we wanted to compete. We want to do efforts to be able to stand shoulder to shoulder to some of the Sahaba. We have people nowadays, actually, they don't want to do anything. And they want on the day of judgment to stand next to net, next shoulder to shoulder to Abu Bakr and to Umar ibn Khattab and to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. They want to, to be at the same level of Khadija and Aisha radiallahu anha. And that's why I remember the verse in Surah al mutaffifin when Allah said, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ In that field, in that regard, means the worship of Allah. You should compete one another. You should raise one another. Allah, when he talked about Jannah, Allah said, Allah didn't say, work so you can enter Jannah. Allah didn't say enter. Allah didn't say just work or worship. No. All the verses that talked about Jannah, it came with the, the verb of competing. It is called Mufa'ala. Mufa'ala. Allah said, Wasari'u ila. Raise, hasten, rush to the forgiveness of your Lord and to the Jannah. This is how much he loved us. And he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as you know, in the hadith, that's actually, he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is speaking about his companions and he said who is the most the most amazing level of iman they said the angels of allah they, ha they have lots of iman they said how not they believe and they, they are in the skies with allah and they said okay the prophets of allah can be the most people who have the most amazing Iman. He said, how come they don't believe while Allah is sending to them revelation? They said, who else has the most amazing Iman? They said, so do you mean us as companions, your Sahaba? He said, how come you do not believe well, you can see me. They said, who are Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who will come after me. And they will not be able to see me. And yet, they will believe in me. They are the owner of the most amazing Iman. That's, that's a great message. So please. We need to stick around to do something, to increase our ibadah, our study to the, to the, to the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to get closer, to know him, to watch our actions every day. I want it today, today, everyone is listening, watching me right now. I want you to give quick review to all your actions the daily actions. Am I following the sunnah? Am I missing something? Am I doing something wrong? 
Maybe. Who knows? You are missing like sunnah. Maybe there is something you need to do to get you closer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We do not want to, to follow blindly and say, هذا ما وجدنا عليه آباءنا. This is what we found our forefathers are doing, so we do the same. So what is the benefit of searching and getting the knowledge? This is why we need to exert effort to get closer to know Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah give us the blessings, the barakah, and, and the reward of following the sunnah of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me whisper with some words to your ears. Lots of people are celebrating what they know as Mawlid or Milad al-Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me say that clearly. I don't know if you know this information or not. You know, there is there are lots of disagreements amongst the scholars about the exact time of his milad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some different differences about the exact time of the milad al nabi But you know what they agreed upon, all of them? They agreed on one thing, that that date is the date of his death, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They agreed that this day is the day of his death, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it could be, could be the day of his milad and at the same time, the day of his mawlid. But now, those who are celebrating in such a way like dancing and, you know, having some songs, some nasheeds, then they go right and left and they do things that even the Sahaba didn't do. Are they celebrating his milad or his death? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which one that they are celebrating? That's a big question. We have to think of. I'm not here to dictate what you need to do, but I'm just telling you, honest fact. Think about this. If it is the same day, of his birth, the same day of his death. So which one you are celebrating? And what does it mean to celebrate? Celebrating is by dancing and by singing songs and just knocking some knocks and that's it. Or if you really wanted to celebrate, quote unquote celebrate, that means to revive his sunnah. And let me ask you that honest, clear question. If we are talking about the best human being ever was created, Rasulullah Muhammad, our rule model, do you think that he deserves only one day per year to celebrate? One day per year to mention or to celebrate him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Of course not. Of course not. If you are talking about the best man ever, that means he has to be alive in our hearts every minute, every day. His sun, his hadith, statements, his recitation for Quran, his message, his stories. He's our hero, our rule model. We don't have any human being ever better than our beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why you had the Sahaba, they used to say that statement, Fidaka Abi wa Ummi Ya Rasulallah. I can accept the sacrifice of my father and my mother for you, O Messenger of Allah. This is the best man ever 
for us. Sallallahu ala Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khayran for listening. Jazakumullah khayran for being there. May Allah accept from all of us. Allahumma ameen ya rabbal alameen. Let me actually go back to the duas. And I want to send all the duas and all the, 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 the blessings and the regards to our brothers and sisters everywhere in our ummah. I want to actually make a special dua to our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Gaza. Yes, we feel sometimes pain. We feel like our hearts are cracking for them, yet we have nothing to do, apparently, to them except the dua. And I'm not here belittling dua, actually. Dua can open gates. Dua can change uh, the destiny. Dua can make the difference. So please, make a dua. Do your best. Show that solidarity to your brothers and sisters, not only in Palestine, not only in Gaza, but in everywhere, in Sudan, in Lebanon, in Pakistan, in India, in everywhere. Make a dua for your ummah in large. May Allah bless all of us. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. اللهم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا هما إلا فرجته اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين اللهم علي بفضلك كلمة الحق والدين اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم ارحم شهداءهم وضمد جراحهم وثبت أقدامهم واجمع حولهم قلوب العباد إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم وحد صفنا واجمع كلمتنا وحببنا إلى بعضنا ألف بين قلوبنا انزع البغضاء من بيننا إنك على كل شيء قدير سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته